Once you have people's attention, how do you get them to want what your business is selling? How do you build desire in them? Once they have to have your product, how do you get them to trust you enough to hand over their hard-earned cash? That's what we're going to be talking about today in the second step in the DFL Money Flow Framework. Distinctions for life. Helping you get what you really want in life with small changes that make a big difference. I'm Ron Davis, here to help ambitious people like you go from being wannabe entrepreneurs to having a profitable and sustainable business. I do this by giving you the mental tools to understand your business and what you need to do next to make it happen. These videos are only one way that I do that. Another way is a short weekly email I send with just a few useful tools, resources, and topics for you. If that sounds like something you'd like to get your hands on, go to distinctionsforlife.tv and sign up. Ron, why do you keep doing this to yourself? You know desire and trust is way too big a topic to cover in just five to seven minutes, just like attention was last week. Once again, folks, I've picked a topic that means I can only give you a very high level overview. Building desire is called a lot of names in business. It's the core of marketing, the heart of sales. It is personified as copywriting. Psychologists, con men, and pickup artists call it the art of persuasion. So what am I going to tell you? I'm going to break it down into three questions. One of the ideas behind the money flow framework is that it is customer focused. This is how your customer's money flows through your business. It is not how you should build your business. The building process is informed by this framework, but it is not ordered by this framework. These questions are what your customer is asking you. It's what's going on in their head as they interact with your desire building content. First is, what is this thing? Another way you might hear this is, what are you trying to sell me? Normally followed almost immediately by how much does it cost? That question we'll address next week in the buy stage of the framework. So make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already. At some point, you have to tell your customer what your product is. There's no toys about that. But there are two big mistakes that I see people do when they answer, what is this thing? One is they start with this answer. And two is that they end with this answer. Let's say you've capitalized on an attention opportunity and sent some interested people to your website, right to the landing page for your product. I'm going to use some friends of mine's business because they made both of these mistakes. Their business is called Frisky Fridays and it is a subscription box service for couples. If you want to check it out, I put a link in the description. When they first got started, their website went something like this. We make a box full of stuff for couples and send it to you every month. And then there was a buy button. And that was it. They started with what the product was and they ended with what the product was. How many sales do you think they made? Not many. Because they were doing nothing to create desire. The only people who might buy were those who already came to the site because they had a desire for the product. Probably because the owners had done some in-person selling. Don't start by describing your product. Instead, first answer the next question that they have. Why do I want it? Or in other words, what problem of mine are you going to solve? Desire, by its very nature, is wanting something you don't have. What is it that your customer wants that they don't have? It isn't a product they don't have. It is a solution to a problem or a desired emotional state that they lack. Probably both. You see, people don't want your product. They want what your product will do for them. They have some problem and they're looking for a solution. What is the problem that your product will solve? Let's go back to the couple subscription box. What problem is it going to solve for the couples who buy it? Hopefully it is going to create greater intimacy, connection, and love in their relationship. It might also solve the problem of boredom or lack of creativity for couples. And it might solve a time crunch problem. People want to do fun creative things with each other. But who has the time to come up with ideas, source the materials, and then plan the activities? Those three solutions are powerful. Heck, when I wrote them out, I started feeling desire for the product and I've already subscribed. That's the reaction you want from your customer. You get it not by telling people what is in your box. You get it by telling them what they are going to get from your product. A big mistake that people make is that they start listing features. They want to tell you all the things that the product does. 
Instead, turn those features into benefits. Why is that feature in the product? What is the customer going to get out of that feature? For example, one feature of a subscription box is that it comes every month. Okay, so what? What is the benefit of it coming every month? Well, every month my wife and I will have something new and exciting to do together without having to remember or plan. It will just automatically show up. It'll be like getting a frisky present every month. So what are the features of your product? What problem does that solve for your customers? That's what sells. Problems solved do more than make something happen. It changes people's emotional state. Emotions are what gets people to act, not facts. Rarely, and at best, facts invoke an emotion. In our example above, I could have just said, the box just shows up without you having to think about it. Okay, that's nice. But what if I say, the box just shows up every month without you having to worry or stress about it? That invoked emotions. Negative emotions that I want to avoid. And avoiding a negative emotion is probably more powerful than getting a positive one. But when I add, it's like getting a frisky present every month, I've added happiness, joy, excitement, and anticipation. All things that I like to feel. Now you've got your people wanting your product. Because of all the wonderful things that it will do and the positive ways it will make them feel. But before they're going to hit that buy button, they're going to ask another question. Are you for real? This is the trust part of the process. Your potential buyer is going to start wondering if you can and will do what you promise. If they are part of your audience or if they have already bought from you, then they already have some trust in you. That is why it is easier to sell to previous buyers than it is to sell to new ones. If they are new to you, they are first going to look for social proof. You see, People look for social indicators that something is popular. They want to know that other people are buying it as well. Especially when uncertain, people will look at the actions and behaviors of others to determine their own. Testimonials are a powerful way to do this. Another is to show how many other people have bought your product. But they don't really know if that's real or if the product will work for them. So they may be wondering how much you believe in your product. And this is where a guarantee comes in. If you really think your product will do all that you say it will do, then why won't you give a tangible promise? Too often, people don't want to give a money-back guarantee because they are worried that they will be taken advantage of. But in most cases, the additional sales will more than make up for any losses due to returns. Another way to prove your product does what it says is to let them try before they buy. This could be a sample or a trial period. There you go. That is the tip of the iceberg when it comes to building desire and trust. If you've considered all of these factors and successfully built desire and trust in your customer, the next step is relatively easy, getting them to buy, which is what we'll talk about next week. Question of the day, how do you build desire and trust? Thank you for watching today. If you liked what you saw, give me a thumbs up. This channel is all about helping you get what you really want in life with small changes that make a big difference. Until next time, I'm Ron Davis. I need someone to push the record button. Otherwise, we're recording? Yeah. Sorry about all the, the junk. I'm Ron Davis, and I'm here to help ambitious people go. Ah, I shouldn't do this right after eating. Okay. Being wannabe preneur. Wannabe preneurs? No, that's blooper reel material there. <laughs>